Well, 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 YouTube, here we are. It is a pickups video. Good night. It's been almost a year since I've done a last pickup video. But again, here we are. Now, without further ado, let me get straight into a heavy hitter. And I really felt, I almost felt bad for this deal that I made on eBay because I kind of, I don't want to say I ripped the guy off because we made a deal, but I absolutely got a steal and that is on Wind Waker for the GameCube. And it's complete in box, but not only did I get the GameCube game, but I got the official or one of the official strategy guides. And it's got a couple of page bins here and there, but I got the strategy guide with Wind Waker for an absolute steal. And again, I almost felt bad, but we made a deal. Now, Wind Waker is a Zelda game that I have not beat since it came out. I remember playing it. I love the cell shaded graphics where a lot of people didn't like that. I really thought it was cool and I love the selling aspect and the kind of open worldness of what the game was. But I just, I have not played it since it came out. Now, moving on, I told you I was gonna start with heavy hitters and another game that I picked up at Midwest Gaming Classic. If you checked out my Midwest Gaming Classic video, you'll know what this is, and that is John Hancock's The Immortal John Hancock's Game, which is a Sega Genesis Block'em Sock'em. This is a puzzle type game, uh, keeping with the Zelda theme. I bought a homebrew of Zelda The Sealed Palace. Get, oh, all nice and in there. Let's see how that turns out. But, The Legend of Zelda, The Sealed Palace. Now, the company that made this game, uh, Retro Circus, I believe, there'll be an image or something about the game. Um, she really did a great job of selling this to me, where, you know, she was really, um, she told me all about the game, what it was, and I hate it. I'm just gonna be honest. It is Legend of Zelda meets Metal Gear Solid. Um, it is just basically a, um, it's a complete brand new game. Uh, new storyline, new music, um, all of that with the Ocarina of Time engine. Um, but you're sneaking through this castle and just like the Ocarina of Time, going through the castle to meet Zelda at first, um, it's the same thing except the guards are it's it's really difficult to pinpoint where they're gonna be and there's a lot of blind spots you're repeatedly getting caught and when you get caught you start over and I mean you keep your items and you keep what you found but you start over and it's very very repetitive ah. so going back to game conventions let me jump back at what I bought at Midwest Gaming Classic. And here we go. Here is a spoiler alert of one of the next reviews for the channel. And that is Hooters. Hooters Road Trip. Hooters. Yep, I guess. Call me a perv. Whatever. The food is terrible, but the Hooters? I don't know. Maybe they're great. I bought this fully thinking it was going to be a bad game. Um, and I had somebody who, who left me a comment in Twitter and he told me this game was actually pretty decent. So I have checked it out. I have spent some time with it. I need to finish playing it before I put the review out. Uh, but spoiler alert again, uh, this is one of the next reviews on the channel. All right, trying to speed this up. I picked up Soviet Strike, which I love the Strike series. I really, really wish we would get a, a compilation or a, a collection of the Strike series on the Switch, PlayStation, or, or whatever. I think it would sell really, really well. Uh, but with all of the nonsense in the world, I do think Soviet Strike is potentially holding that up. Uh, you know, Putin, whatever. But I love Strike games. The other one I picked up, uh, the last game that I picked up is Jet Moto 2. Now this is 
one of two games that I got for the PlayStation 1 for Christmas back in 1997, uh, 1998. Um, so it's a pretty solid racer. It's another series that PlayStation has just forgotten about or ignored. It's a decent racer and I wish they would do something with it, bring it back, but whatever. So moving right along with the pickups, we're going to be getting into a little bit of fluff that the majority of people won't care about, but they're games that they have high nostalgia. They're very nostalgic for me, and that's what I want to buy. Um, Jay from Square Pegs recently put out a video about how he collects and how it needs to change, and I fully, fully, absolutely respect his thoughts in that video, and basically it means stop collecting or stop buying just to build a collection. Focus on what you want and what makes you happy and buy that, or what means something to you. Older games or whatever that you rented, played, wanted back in the day, something that just means something to you. That's what building a collection is all about. That's honestly something that I've been doing for the last year or so. So getting into the fluff, we're just gonna show it off. Um, right here um, is some Mad King, Madden games. Mad 98, 2000, 2001 with my boy Eddie George, 2002 with Dante Culpepper. I love the Madden games. I hate what they've become, but I love the older Madden games where there was competition and Tiburon, Tiburon and EA, they were constantly trying to make a better product than all the other competition. And they made really good games. And I really respect and appreciate what they did. And I love playing them. I love collecting them. I know a lot of people will say they're crap, but one of the interviews that me and Tiger Chainsaw did with uh, John Hancock at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and I love how he spoke about it, was he talked about older sports games and how he really enjoyed those. And I, I love that because I love playing old sports games. And for me, that's something is, it's quick, it's easy to pick up, it's easy to put down, and I can play a season, I can do whatever, and just come back to it the next day. Just turn my brain off. And I also picked up, boom, oh, the Madden 2001 Strategy Guide. Yes, in all of its glory. Um, again, it's got my boy Eddie George on it. And this just means something to me. And, you know, say what you want, again, about old sports games. This talks about the different player stats. And honestly, it doesn't mean much um, as far as what or how you play the game. But this is why you should collect. Just for stuff that makes you happy. Another PlayStation 1 classic that I picked up was Crash Bandicoot 2. I talked about Jet Moto being one of two games that I got for Christmas. Well, this was the other one. And I recently streamed this on my channel and after playing the Crash Insane Trilogy, I really do enjoy playing Crash Bandicoot games, especially on the Insane Trilogy and Crash 4. Um, everybody talks about Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Cuphead, whatever. If you want to play a hard game, play the Crash Insane Trilogy because they are difficult games. Uh, but I was actually surprised. I did stream this and I actually did pretty well for the first time playing it in, I don't know, over 20 years, whatever it's been. Um, just a classic. If you're a PlayStation collector, you have to have that in your collection. Uh, the next one I picked up, and there's a couple of couple here, or a couple themes here, whatever. That is WWF Attitude for the Dreamcast. I recently reviewed WCW Nitro on the 64, which was a disaster. But the Attitude and the Warzone games, they were not great games, but again, like these were something that I remember when they came out. There was a lot of excitement and a lot of hype about because it was the WWF Attitude game. It was back when wrestling was at its best. 
Um, and so I do enjoy playing these old wrestling games. Um, so that was one that I was excited to get. The other one here is WWF, There Goes the Neighborhood. Um, this is WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game, um, just better. And I, this was a game that did not get a lot of love. It didn't get a lot of uh, representation, a lot of spotlight um, back in the day. But it's a really, really fun game um, that Acclaim put out. WWF in your house is just a lot of fun. Um, and it's awesome to play. On to a really heavy hitter, which is one that I've been looking for for a long time. And I've been eyeballing it at one of my local retro game stores and they refused to make me a deal and the last time that I went in there I asked two store employees to make me a deal on it at different times and they both said no and so as as like I've been for a while now I I was I was over it but as I was checking out I asked the guy behind the register I said hey would you make me a deal on this and he said absolutely um, and that is the Resident Evil Long Box uh, PlayStation 1 game, which is one that um, I've had my eye on. It's complete in box. It's in great condition, great condition. It's got the registration card. Um, it's in phenomenal condition. Um, again, um, what I think a lot of people don't know, especially right now, is the original Resident Evil game had four variants. It had the long box, then it had the small case of just Resident Evil with Chris Redfield on it. And then you had the Resident Evil with the DualShock version with Chris Redfield. And again, you had the greatest hits version, which is gonna be the one that most people are primarily familiar with. But that's the last one that I needed for my collection on the PlayStation 1. So they wanted a lot of money for that game and I got it for almost half of what it was worth. And so I say that to say, you know, make connections. Go into your local game stores and just have that conversation and just visit, talk video games, try to make deals. It never hurts to ask. Again, I asked two guys and they said no and I asked one that gave it to me for almost half off. So make sure you're doing that. All right, last couple, uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing 2. I forgot that I made a sequel until I saw it, picked it up. Conflict Desert Storm, I don't know, picked it up. Sonic Frontiers, I picked it up. I've heard that it's the best since Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. So I am intrigued to play it. I just don't know when I'll get to it. So, but again, Sonic Frontiers, if it's great, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, another one, Rage. Uh, I think my good buddy Heapsel Games was talking about Rage 2. I haven't even played this one yet, so we'll see. And the last one that I picked up that I want to highlight is Resident Evil 4. Now, that for me um, is my game of the year. It's a phenomenal remake. That's right up there with the king of all remakes, the original Resident Evil remake. They did such a fantastic job of making a remake feel and represent the original game so perfectly. Uh, the game is intense, um, it's challenging, it's fun. I had a hard time putting the game down. It really feels like what Capcom did with Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, it kind of feels like they were building on that to make this game. Um, it's a fantastic game. I cannot recommend it enough. And dear Lord baby Jesus, please let them make a Code Veronica remake now because that's the one that so many people want. I know it's been a long video. Thanks everybody for watching. Again, like, comment, hit the subscribe button. Let me know if the what you thought about the video. Let me know what you thought about the pickups. Tell me they were good. Tell me I suck. Whatever. Again, I appreciate you guys. Everybody be good. Take care. And we will see you all next time.